Hi folks, Steve Rondonero back at French Lick Resort, ready with another installment of our history stories that we've been sharing through this coronavirus odyssey. That of course is the West Baden Springs Hotel back there behind me. This hotel has weathered a lot and come back strong. So let's pick up the story. Now you remember, this was John Lane's baby back in uh, about 1850. He had come down the road from the French Lick Springs Hotel, started the Mile Lick Inn, renamed it West Baden. Then in comes a fella named Lee Sinclair in 1888 and things really start to pop here. Lee Wiley Sinclair was a successful businessman and state legislator who bought into the West Baden Springs Hotel in 1888. A man with a vision, Sinclair added things to the grounds like an opera house and a spectacular enclosed double-decker bicycle and horse track that was two-thirds of a mile long, so big that he put a baseball field and tennis courts inside. They really were the gay 90s at West Baden as the railroad brought in guests from across the Midwest. The hotel prospered. June 14th, 1901, disaster. A devastating fire swept through the grounds, leveling several buildings and dashing Sinclair's dreams. Spurred on by his daughter, Lee Sinclair decided to rebuild, but in a most spectacular fashion. He would build a hotel centered around the world's largest free span dome and do it in less than a year. Preposterous, can't be done, they said. Sinclair found architect Harrison Albright, who said it could be done, and employing some of the same techniques used to build the big suspension bridges of the era, did it in less than a year. An amazing feat that resulted in an amazing structure that soon became known as the eighth wonder of the world. With the domed hotel as the centerpiece, Lee Sinclair's resort and its many amenities gained all manner of fame. The baseball field inside that bicycle track would host numerous major league teams for spring training in the early 1900s. The Chicago Cubs trained here when they won the World Series in 07 and 08. And like the French Lick Hotel, West Baden too had benefited greatly from all of the gambling in the valley. Lee Sinclair was already planning a major hotel renovation when he died in 1916. His daughter Lillian and her husband Charles Rexford pressed on with the work and a year later, the Grecian court style that we see in the atrium today came to be. With World War I raging, Lillian leased the hotel to the U.S. Army for use as a hospital in 1918. Army Hospital No. 35 may have been the most grandly appointed facility of its kind. Christmas that year featured a performance by the Hagenback Wallace Circus inside the atrium, the ultimate big top. When it came time to turn West Baden back into a hotel, Lillian Sinclair sold it to Ed Ballard, the man who owned that circus and had made millions running many of the area gambling houses. Ballard made more improvements and attracted more convention business. West Baden was on a roll. Until the crash. The guests disappeared within days. Ballard hung on until the fall of 1931 when he closed the doors of the empty hotel for good. With no buyers in sight, Ed Ballard sold West Baden to the Society of Jesus, the Jesuits, for a dollar. The hotel became a seminary for the training of Catholic priests within the order. An ironic pairing, this opulent structure and a group centered on an austere and simple lifestyle. The Jesuits had made West Baden their own until 1962, when the cost of upkeep became too much for them. The hotel sat vacant until 1966 when Northwood Institute moved in and set up a college program that included hotel and restaurant management study. Northwood had a 17-year run until the cost of maintaining that magnificent dome structure got the better of them as well. With Northwood out, West Baden sat vacant from 1983 on while other owners with dreams and schemes came and went. The eighth wonder of the world and its once immaculate grounds continued to deteriorate, as did the Springs Valley economy. This wall collapse in 1991 forced the Indiana Landmarks Foundation into action. If not stopped, it might be the beginning of the end of this entire National Historic Landmark. The foundation was able to make temporary repairs, but stabilizing the wall and saving the hotel was a far, far bigger task. That's when the foundation contacted Bill and Gail Cook in Bloomington. 
Self-made billionaires in the biomedical device field, the Cooks were also becoming more and more passionate about historic preservation. They stepped up initially with $2 million. The Historic Landmarks Foundation bought West Baden for $250,000 in 1996. The Cooks said they would help fix it up to the point that it could be sold. Well, the job just got bigger and bigger and more costly. But the Cooks hung in there. Then no one wanted to buy the place. What now? Gambling, legal this time, would again fire up the local economy. With lots of local support, State Representative Jerry Dembo was able to get the state's last casino license for French Lick. In 2005, a Cook subsidiary was awarded that casino license. With a financial plan that now made sense for the future, they purchased West Baden and the French Lick Springs Hotel. It was full speed ahead on multiple fronts. There were plenty of surprises, bumps, and cost overruns along the way, but the Cooks, with son Carl also fully involved, were not about to be deterred from restoring the eighth wonder of the world to its former glory. The doors reopened in 2007. West Baden, a hotel once again for the first time since 1931. And West Baden shall rise yet again when this is all over. Our grounds crews have been working really hard to keep the place looking good. The gardens will be looking gorgeous when you get the all clear to return. <laughs>